I was contacted by the four horsemen, and they were wondering if I'd be interested in being a guest horseman for a month. Naturally, I jumped at the chance. Then a little while later, they told me the theme for my month's build would be Mardi Gras. And I thought, uh oh. <laughs> I thought, well, the Bone Shaker just seems like a natural casting for a Mardi Gras kind of build. It has an attitude to it. That an attitude, it's fun, it's different, it's kind of wild. So, uh,. Yeah, it seemed like the bone shaker was the way I wanted to go. And I had an idea for what I wanted to throw on the front of it. Because, yeah, I could have stuck with the skull and, and yeah, it wouldn't have been that out of place, really. But uh, I thought, yeah, I'm going to do something a little different. And, and so I started, you know, I got into it. And I had to clean up the bone shaker casting a little. There's casting lines on the roof that uh, I just wanted to clean up. And I, and, you know, there's some different areas on it that just need a little sprucing. They, they tend to be rough on most of these that I see. And they kind of look okay rough in a lot of cases um, because it adds to the attitude of the bone shaker. But uh, yeah, I, I decided I wanted to clean it up. And the other thing you're going to have to laugh at, but you know, Mardi Gras colors are purple, gold, and green. Green. What green do I love? <laughs> yeah, lime ice. You had to know that was going to show up on this build. When you see my name and Mardi Gras, and I'm doing a build, you really got to figure lime ice is going to end up on this thing, right? So... Uh, Got the casting all cleaned up. You know, there's not much to the casting itself. There's just the, the metal body. This one has a plastic base, plastic interior. You've all seen it probably a hundred times. Uh, cleaned up the casting in my usual way using IPA to just degrease it and get it ready for paint. And I've always found that using IPA is a nice, easy way to do this. And it's really inexpensive. <laughs> I always have IPA around for a variety of uses. And uh, so that, that was the way I was going to get this thing ready as usual. <laughs> so then this goes off to paint. And <laughs> yeah, like I said, testers, extreme lacquer, lime ice. I do some decals for this. And, and once the decals are on and done, I hit it with the worth clear lacquer you see there. There's the decals I came with, up with. And I had to have, you know, les ailes, bon temps roulé in there. But the good times roll. But I also wanted to address, uh, you know, pay tribute to a group. And I decided on the Black Cat Magic Club. What I found online was, uh, it's interesting. You know, according to this, New Orleans is a city full of secret societies, fraternal organizations, sororities, social aid and pleasure clubs, carnival crews, and marching associations. Now, the Black Cat Magic Club isn't a big organization, but it does have a state charter. It's a nonprofit organization established for the betterment of its members and the city at large. Members pay dues every year for administrative costs and to conduct charity work, like buying school supplies for children or managing a rent assistance fund. I really like the sound of that. I like the thought of a black cat on this. So uh, I had to use their logo. <laughs> their logo ends up on the doors and the cat from the logo ends up behind the cab, as you'll see shortly. There you see me popping the les les bon temps roulé on the top. That was an interesting design I pulled offline. Um, it centers kind of weird. The print, the print is kind of different than the centering on the crown. So I had to find a happy medium in the middle. I almost didn't put the crown. And if you saw the earlier designs, the crown wasn't on some of the ones I printed, but I like the crown on there. 
uh, I did have two part tail light decals that I made a while back. Uh, the white layer went down first, as you saw a few seconds ago. Now I'm putting on the color layer. And I think it gives a nice crisp look to the tail lights. But the wheels. Yeah, I went back to the uh, Hot Wheel COE casting that I've used so many times. Uh, Strip the wheels off of this because the size on them, they're real riders. And the size is perfect for the bone shaker. I've used these on the bone shaker before. I'll probably definitely use them again. I picked up a bunch of the COE castings a while back, uh, specifically with this in mind, even though I do love the COE and uh, I keep saying I'm going to do a build with one of those and, and I just need to get around to it. Now the sizing wasn't perfect on these for the bone shaker. Uh, fortunately, again, like I said, it's real riders. I didn't want the red stripe to show, so I was planning on flipping those anyway. Um, those of you who are my age probably remember flipping white walls. So, <laughs> so the white wall would be on the inside because we didn't want white walls on our car, but those were the tires we could afford at the time. Um, <laughs> or whatever we wanted in our price range, it was white walls. So... Uh, I do end up adjusting the length of these axles and I do it using the, you know, the trick with the axle tube that I've done before, you know, I had to get these, figure out exactly how much I wanted to cut off of these. The fronts, the fronts almost didn't need to be adjusted, but you know, if you're doing it, do it right. So I cut the end off of, uh, Oh, a much longer axle, as you see there. I cut the axles that were on there off. Uh, they weren't long enough to just do the substitution, obviously, with those axles. So I grabbed some much longer axles that I had laying around. Here you see me uh, marking it to cut it down to size. And, you know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, fit, refit, test it again, make sure it's right. Um, cut the excess off here. Yeah, I'm using my funky little cutters. I don't know why I didn't have the bigger cutters out. <laughs> I have some really nice cutters that are perfect for this. But I think because I had those cutters out for when I cut these uh, off of the COE, because the other cutters I have won't fit in that narrow area, I ended up just using them anyway. Here I'm just cutting the little tiny, you know, I stick an old axle in an axle tube and I cut just a little tiny piece off the axle tube. I feed the axle in there so that I won't crush the tube as I'm cutting it. And it works really well. You just roll it back and forth a little bit. Um, the hardest part about doing this is not doing it at an angle, trying to keep it as straight as possible because you don't want to get a weird shape to that little donut that you're cutting. Pull the axle out of there, and then you just pull that little donut piece off of this scrap axle. Once that's off of there, the hard part, <laughs> threading it onto the good axle. And uh, you know, getting it in place just for a test fit here. Make sure that I have this the right length. And, and again, it's fit and refit on this stuff. And the nice part about doing it this way is you can adjust it at this point. You know, like this, if this is too long. Basically, you can cut a little bit more off the axle. You always want to go too long and then shorten it as you go rather than cutting it too short out of the gate. Once you have it where you want it, slide it down on the axle a little ways, hit the tip with some CA glue. And then I use the wheel to slide it to the edge. I'm sure some of you are going to say, oh, but you're going to get glue on the wheel. No. Not if you're careful. And then you slide it out of the way anyway. Give it a little extra nudge into place. And yeah, that thing's good and solid. It's not going to go anywhere. The, I, I find this works really well. And it's easy. It's easy and it's fast. And I'm lazy and cheap. And axle tubes last a lot longer <laughs> doing it this way. I did want to sand some of the roundness out of the, the uh, I guess they're supposed to be disc, disc brakes. Oh, hey, 
here's what I resin printed for the front of the bone shaker. I did have to cut some of that down to size. I cut the headlights off, you know, the hands that are holding headlights on the front, cut that off. And I did some filing to the skull itself. I'm trying to get a lot of it out of there so uh, that mask would fit on it properly. It's not like I want it so that you see the eyes through it or anything like that. That wasn't my goal. I wasn't trying to get a snug fit to the face. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the face doesn't exist under there. <laughs> um, and I did enough filing pretty much to make certain of that. And then I CA glued that mask onto the front. I hit the wheels with gold tinted because I wanted them to be gold because again, the colors of Mardi Gras, purple, green, and gold. Uh, once those were done, you know, put the tires back on, put the axles on, hit that with the little uh, resin, use the resin pin. Again, the resin pin is so crazy handy for this kind of thing. Uh, I'm not using the JB Weld brand <laughs> resin pin, but they do have one. And it's my understanding it works perfectly well. Uh, it's probably an easier option than trying to find this Bondic pin, but I, this Bondic pin is lasting forever. You do see that yellow stripe. That's where the tape was when I uh, sprayed the base black. So now, because some of the interior, you know, the floorboard of the base is seen inside the bone shaker. If you look closely, you can see it. Even though this has a closed top, I wanted to play it safe. Hit that with purple Duplicolor Metal Cast Paint. You'll see it here in a second. There's that. Once I've hit it with the purple, I did detail like the exhaust, you know, the tips are black, inside the mask is black, and then I started detailing the mask. Um, most of that is off camera because it was very tedious work. Um, and then just for giggles, I took some micro crystal clear and I had these really subatomic size particle, uh, subatomic particle size beads that I thought, well, let me throw some of those in the bed because, you know, if the good times are going to roll, you need some beads. <laughs> if you're in New Orleans, you got to have some beads with you, right? So uh, that's how it all went together. There's the pieces. I'm really happy with the way the decals turned out on that. I didn't want super colorful on the decals because I wanted the mask to really be the most colorful thing on here. Yet I wanted the Mardi Gras colors in the build. I thought about on the uh, intake, I thought about putting uh, gold tips on that, decided against it. Um, it, I don't think it would look right. I think that intake on the engine would look odd if I just did the tips in gold and I didn't want to do the whole engine through the poking up through the compartment gold uh, because I thought it'd be too much gold. And, uh, you know, the wheels are gold. I wanted more purple. I, I wanted there to be a, a nice amount of purple, green and gold. And since the whole body's green, that wasn't a concern. So uh, there you have it. There you have the finished build and rolls great on those real riders. So here's where it started. I'd like to thank him, take a moment right now to thank the four horsemen for inviting me to be a guest horseman this month. I'd like to also thank them for throwing Mardi Gras at me because uh, it was kind of a challenge you know, trying to figure out what to do. And uh, I like what I came up with. I love the way that mask turned out. And I think it has a, a real Mardi Gras feel. I like the tribute to the Black Cat Magic Club, the beads in the back, I couldn't resist. Yeah, we're gonna be throwing beads out of this thing, right? So uh, there you have it. Everybody be sure and check out all of the other builds in this uh, Invitational. I can't wait to see what other people have done 
Uh, I am aware of one other build. <laughs> and we both kind of headed down the same path. So uh, jokingly, I'm expecting a lot of people to have different things on the front of their cars. So uh, we'll see. I I'm really excited to see what shows up. Be sure and check out all the other builds. Um, be sure and check out the Four Horsemen YouTube channel. There will be a link to it in the description of this video. And uh, they will have a recap video on their channel as well. So that'll help you find the other builds. I hope everyone likes this build as much as I do. This was fun. It's a kick in the pants. That's what it's all about. Everybody stay safe and healthy out there. And uh, les les, bon temps roulé. Let the good times roll.